Joining us to talk about the, quote, lost emails, the president of Judicial Watch. Judicial Watch obtained the emails through a Freedom of Information Act. Tom Fitton, we welcome you back to America's Forum. J.D., good to be with you again. So, Tom, the IRS is saying there are computer problems, there was a crash. Uh, have they provided any evidence to support their claims that these emails are irretrievably lost? No, they have not. And, uh, you know, so Congress has subpoenas out there, your listeners should understand. And Lois Lerner was head of exempt organizations, which was the, uh, the entity within IRS that was doing all this IRS uh, Tea Party suppression and oppression. Uh, and um, so you've got Congress with subpoenas, you've got Judicial Watch with Freedom of Information Act lawsuits to gain access to the, these emails. And uh, we've never been told, we have a court order requiring production of emails. We've never been told, they're producing emails to us, they didn't tell us there's any problem. So not only do they need to explain to Congress, and I don't think, I think they're gaming Congress, but they're not gonna be able to get away with that, in my view, before a federal court. So uh, this is a serious issue, it's a serious scandal, and I don't believe it. Um, you know, important emails are supposed to be printed off if you work in the government. You just can't send out important emails You just rely on the computer systems to keep track of them. You need to print off important material. Uh, so I think there's a game going on here. And uh, we've already seen that with this administration where subpoenas requiring production of Benghazi talking points. Uh, the White House uh, didn't produce that to Congress. Uh, but the Obama administration turned it over to the Judicial Watch under our litigation. So I suspect it's going to be groups like Judicial Watch out there doing independent investigations uh, under the court, under the province of the courts to uh, figure out what went on here. So, and, and this is a distinction that, that really bears amplification. Even though Congress has a constitutional mandate of oversight, the administration can, wh whomever's there, can play a variety of, of delay games, delay tactics. But when you go into court uh, to take action, uh, federal judges, at least heretofore, have told the administration, hey, you got to pony up, and they do that. Well, why the discrepancy? Because we're, we're raised to think that, boy, if this is a constitutional mandate, people have to follow through with it. Well, because subpoenas is a game. I mean, you send a subpoena to a lawyer in a government, and the government's going to come up with reasons not to uh, turn over documents, and they're going to play politics. It's a political process because you have politicians subpoenaing other politicians. And unless it's before a court, uh, there's nothing that's going to be done in terms to enforce the terms of the subpoena. But when we file a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit, uh, it's in the court, and they got to follow the rules, and the court orders production on a regular way, and they need to tell the court if there are any issues or if they're withholding any documents. You know, but on the other hand, J.D., to be fair to Congress and to the media, it shouldn't, mean, it shouldn't matter whether it's a FOIA or a subpoena or a letter or a media inquiry. The, con the administration needs to be transparent. And the idea that you got to ask the right question or send the type, right type of legal request in to get information about a major league scandal like abuse of the IRS shows you that this administration uh, puts transparency way down on the list and is as secretive as anything Nixon would have dreamed of. Well, yeah, we've heard about this, and I flash back to Rosemary Woods and those pictures trying to justify how she might have mistakenly created the 18 and a half minute gap in the tapes. Let, let me talk more about the gap in the emails. As you pointed out, Tom, Judicial Watch was able to obtain emails heretofore. Uh, how, how far in did they take all of us in understanding Lois Lerner's role? And did her declaration of her Fifth Amendment rights simultaneous to I've done nothing wrong, uh, which should hold water, the, the, taking the Fifth or her protestations that she's done nothing wrong? Well, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but, you know, looking at what I understand to be Fifth Amendment law, uh, you know, you can't testify and cooperate as she supposedly did and go into the Justice Department and tell them uh, what she did. And then in another in another investigative body like Congress, uh, assert the Fifth Amendment. You know, it's interesting in the civil context, if you're sued, you know, privately and you take the Fifth Amendment in a civil case, you will um, uh, that can be uh, used against you.
you know, people can infer uh, negative things from taking the Fifth Amendment in a civil case. And I think that's applicable to Congress. Taking the Fifth Amendment can be used against you in a civil case. Well, it's interesting, and probably your phone was ringing because uh, hardworking Judicial Watch folks are out <laughs> g getting things done right now. In all sincerity, we, we think back, and at times th there used to be that, that whole uh, independent counsel statute. Congress eliminated that. Should, should that be back in business in your mind? Well, I think there could be a con you know the problem with the independent counsel is that the Supreme Court found constitutional uh, concerns that that you had this the council the independent counsel was too independent it wasn't answerable to the executive branch or to Congress it was almost a like a new branch of government in some respects but I think you could have a special counsel uh, that would be more independent of the Justice Department. You know, Congress is going to be asking the Justice Department to investigate uh, emails that it may have received from Lois Lerner. Because we now know that Lois Lerner, thanks to Judicial Watch, was coordinating with the Justice Department about possibly prosecuting uh, the same people that they were oppressing. So uh, the Department of Justice is implicated in this IRS scandal uh, just as much as the IRS is. So we can't rely on them in the ordinary course to conduct an investigation that would uh, reassure Americans that it's impartial and being fairly administered. That's why you need to have a special counsel. Remember the special counsels that were appointed to investigate the Bush administration and mm -hmm. result in the indictment of Scooter Libby and the conviction of Scooter Libby? We need a special counsel like that to investigate the IRS scandal. And Congress has been gamed enough. We had a Benghazi Select Committee. Let's have an IRS Select Committee. Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. I know my old committee, Ways and Means, taking a good look at this. 30 seconds remain. Quickly, can you give us a sneak preview? What are you working on next? Can you tell us? Well, we're looking at the IRS documents to figure out uh, where the gaps are, and we uh, may be going to the court uh, to see if the court can provide us uh, any more information or to force the IRS to provide information uh, that is a bit more certain about what went on as opposed to, as I said, a letter to Congress that um, raises more questions than it answers. Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch, we'll have you back real soon. We thank you for your time. There is more to come on America's Forum.